In the end of October 2022, the federal government of Germany approved the compromise made by the giant Chinese shipping company Costco to buy a 24.9% stake in a terminal of the Hamburg port. Although the deal doesn't give the Chinese company any say in the strategic management of Germany's busiest port, the decision has raised concerns over the influence of China regarding the control of European critical infrastructure. The situation in Hamburg, however, is part of a bigger trend that encompasses similar acquisitions of critical assets in Europe, Africa and Asia. As a matter of fact, two state-owned Chinese shipping companies, Costco Shipping Ports and China Merchants Port Holdings, hold together stakes in 16 ports across Europe and the Mediterranean Sea. The port of Piraeus in Athens, Greece, while being 100% controlled by one of these companies, serves as an example of how far these infrastructure investments have gone. In this video, we'll see why this Chinese strategy of acquiring such critical infrastructure matters. Alfred Thayer Mayhem, the most important American naval strategist at the turn of the 20th century, considered seaports and the control of shipping as one of the pillars of maritime power. Even though he wrote over a century ago, his works still have great relevance, and therefore it's possible to see his influence in the Chinese strategy. In this sense, China as the world's top trading country, has allocated resources and efforts to have participation in the busiest and largest seaports of the world. For example, out of the top 20 container ports in 2020, according to the World Shipping Council, 13 of them are either located in China or are partly controlled through Chinese investments with notable facilities, including the port of Antwerp in Belgium, where Costco and China Merchants Port Holdings hold together a 25% stake, and also the port of Rotterdam in the Netherlands, where Costco holds a 35% stake. It's important to mention, however, that these Chinese investments are geopolitically oriented and they not only target infrastructure facilities in Western developed countries. In this regard, following the acquisitions in the port of Haifa in Israel, Port Said in Egypt, Port of Aden in Yemen, Port of Djibouti in Djibouti, Port of Gwadar in Pakistan, and in the port of Henbatota in Sri Lanka, it's not hard to visualize a pattern considering the important trade routes connecting the Indo-Pacific region in Southeast Asia and the Mediterranean region in Europe. That being the case, by fully controlling the seaports in these regions, as it is the case in the majority of the examples mentioned, China is able to assert dominance in these strategic sea lanes, in particular, considering the relevance of such routes to both the Chinese economy and to the wider global trade. In addition, these investments also provide the Chinese administrator companies an impressive amount of shipping data regarding the transport of products in the terminals. In this sense, this information, if properly assessed, comprises a substantial and strategic advantage considering the possibility to comprehend how most of world supply chains are organized, what a particular country is exporting or importing, or even to possess the knowledge of the trade pattern of specific products and inputs for certain industries. As a result, this amount of data, 
once assessed by the Chinese state-owned companies, can provide a guidance to the policymakers in Beijing, so that the Chinese government can act previously according to their national interests, that is, by being able to exert influence and pressure on other governments or companies through powerful diplomatic and economic tools. To conclude, the third consideration regarding these Chinese acquisitions of seaports is related to the possibility of China using these once built for commerce facilities as military and naval assets. In 2017, following a 99-year leasing agreement between China Merchants Ports Holdings and the administrators of the port of Henbatota in Sri Lanka, the Chinese state-owned shipping company also acquired a 70% stake in the terminals, and therefore, a substantial portion of the operations in the facility was handled to the Chinese company. The port of Henbatota is located in the south of the island of Sri Lanka and is considered a strategic location regarding the trade routes in the Indo-Pacific region. As a consequence of the almost total handling of the seaport operations to the Chinese, the country's navy began to use the port in Sri Lanka as a docking facility to its military ships for the first time in August 2022, a decision which has sparked concern of Indian authorities since the seaport is very close to the Indian territory, and for that reason, there were fears of the People's Liberation Army Navy turning the port of Henbatota into a military naval base in the Indo-Pacific region. In the port of Djibouti, in the Horn of Africa region, there has been a similar development, but in this case, the Chinese government went further and established the first overseas military base of the country. The investments in the port facility, which Beijing officially claimed at the time, were made with an intention to modernize regional logistics, began in 2015, and soon in 2017, it became a strategic base of the country's armed forces after an agreement with the government of Djibouti. With this decision, China was able to further project its power in the Gulf of Aden, then becoming one of the most important players in the regional security and economic context, and therefore being capable to safeguard and protect its shipping interests in a critical passage to access both the Mediterranean Sea and the Indian Ocean. And what do you think of this Chinese strategy of acquiring such critical maritime infrastructure? Let your opinion in the comments below and I'll be glad to read your feedback. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider clicking the like and subscribe buttons. Thanks for watching.